Hi, I'm Danny from American River Race Hardware. Thanks for joining us. Today we are working on a Pro 34 with a uh, auger jam. So I'm going to be going through, showing you the easiest way to just clear it out and get back to smoking. So let's get started with that. Yeah, after startup, you end up getting an LER code and it's never gone above ambient temperature. Uh, it can mean a couple different things. Um, igniter is faulty a uh, auger jam bad pellets generally bad pellets can cause just a lot more smoke and just rise a little bit in temp before going in ler code but if you don't see any smoke at all it's either going to be an auger jam or an igniter so let's get in here and verify that that is in fact the case it's an auger jam not igniter and there's an easy way to figure that one out so you tear this up <clears throat> So you notice the burn pot is empty. If it was an igniter failure, this burn pot would be full of pellets. And that would mean the igniter is not lighting the pellet. Since it's empty, it will be an auger jam. And we're gonna turn it on right now. And you can hear it grind. And let's uh, show you back. So if you look at that auger screw right here, that should turn for the first 30 seconds that you turn it on. And you can hear it. You can hear that electrical whine. So it's definitely an auger jam. So let's uh, get in there and clear it out. Step number one, disconnect your power. Don't forget that. Could fry the controller. So the first step to clearing out an auger is definitely emptying out your pellets. Because we gotta take this metal shielding off the assembly. So we're gonna dump the pellets right now. Correct. <laughs> All right. And then if you don't care about making a little bit of a mess, then that's good enough. So if you wanna keep your area real clean, then go ahead and vacuum out what you can from inside of here and uh, it'll just help keep a, a clean area when you're done. It will make a mess regardless though. After emptying out your hopper, I'm gonna take the controller partially out. This will be the easiest way. And then what I do is I pull it out slightly and I put, I feed the bottom end inside and I let it drop inside of here. And put your screws back where you got them so you don't lose them. Because when these fall, they find somewhere hidden away to hide out and never find them again. Next step is just gonna be four screws on this shield, two here and two on the back. And generally, it holds itself pretty good, even with the screws out. At this point, it just come right up. And then a little masking tape holding this, or in this case, felt. We'll just get rid of that. At this point, you're either gonna have, this is where your auger is, and you're either gonna have this little screw, pin right here or you're gonna have an allen screw with a nylock nut i prefer those over this method some of these will drop out you may open this up and just find that pin sitting on the shelf and the auger is actually the motor is spinning but it's not attached to the screw i've been seeing a little bit of that uh, some of these pins just are a little too small for the setup not sure what scenario is what but I've seen it several times. At that point, just get a 632 Allen, that's three quarters of an inch long, <clears throat> and a little nylock nut for it, and it'll never be an issue again. <clears throat> so at this point, 
You don't want to pry on that. When you, if you pry on that, you can break the gears inside the transmission. You can spin the fan and it turns the motor to take pressure off the, where it was tweaked in there a bit. And now that it's loose, this pin will fight you a little bit sometimes. Just pop that pin out, slide this guy off, and then get my quarter inch. Spin that out, and place it somewhere safe. On this guy, we'll get this bushing out of here. And there's a hole in the bushing where that screw went into. Just remember that location when you're putting it back in. Here's another some you have to actually get a hammer and, and hit that to break it in there. This one I'm just going to try to rotate backwards and unscrew it from the jam. And this is going to be the messy part. So if you have a shop vac at this point, put the shop vac right here and suck all these pellets up as they come out. Try to catch them over here. Make sure your pin's not going to go in there. And then, if you get just a little grip at a time, you can generally bring them out. You can see this is where the auger jam was. All these dusty pellets. It's all that the moisture that caused it to lock up. Then you're going to have to go back in and thread into the jam. And bring out little bits at a time. It'll look like dust. And just continue that until it's cleared up. And this is all what caused the jam in here. And then the rest you can push through and that just pushed everything to the burn pot. So now we're gonna get our uh, shop back out and clean this area up. So now that our auger is uh, free and clear, we're gonna put this screw here, this uh, alignment. You don't want it kind of back where it was originally so you don't have to worry about spinning the motor a whole bunch. So it's gonna roughly be right there. And then uh, that's when you're gonna put the bushing in. Make sure that screw hole is gonna line up with where your screw is, no matter which way. And we're gonna do that. And then you're gonna hold the, the, the screw here and finish sliding this jobber in. Take your screws out. If you also, if you have a, one of the older Elite grills, you'll notice this gasket right here, how it's opened on this side. No water is going to come in here. You're going to find that yours is actually joined right here, which you can see they shrink up over time and this is a pretty newer grill so um, yours might be significantly bigger than that but it's going to be on this side where water can get through this channel right here and go right in generally the auger jams i see are right in here so i take high temperature rtv and i run a bead from just over this lip to just over this lip let it set for about 10 minutes and then put everything back together and that'll make it 
dramatically more water resistant for future uh, auger jams. This one was just from sitting. So with the seals like that, I'm not worried about, I never have auger jams on pro models right there. So we're gonna get this lip on the outside, that lip on the outside, slide it down. Make sure that your uh, RTD rod wire is not pinched on the channel bottom. You can open up here and make sure there's no wires. I've seen wires looped in here from people taking them apart. So this is clear. Now we're just gonna put it back together. The screen, the top comes in first, slides up. Then you'll see a yellow wire down here at the bottom, the yellow and green wire. That's got to go over this lip. So I always start with putting that over the bottom. And it just slides right in. And I did all this without cutting one zip tie. So it's a, it's a pretty pretty easy job especially if you've done 20 30 40 of them and so now it's uh, ready to go back and start cooking just need to put pellets in it prime the auger again and uh, get meat on it thanks for hanging with us through this I really hope it helped you if you have any more questions feel free to call the store or myself American River Race Hardware um, my card has my cell phone number on it. It's 916-261-1305. And I'll love to help you through something. Um, I've probably seen about everything that can go wrong with these. And uh, pretty high success rate, so we'll get you fixed. If you want to see more of these videos and cooking videos, please hit the subscribe button above and hang out with me doing this. Or come down on Saturday and. Uh, Let's talk barbecue. <laughs> Thank you.